Hello and welcome back to No Journey News. I'm Vrunia and I'm here to keep you informed but also entertained. As the last podcast of 2020, we thought we'd cover the major topic of the year, the new FIFA 21. Just kidding guys, it's COVID of course. Vaccine, 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 vaccine. Begging of you, please go in my heart. The virus has been in the news from all the way back in January when the pandemic started in China. It quickly made its way around the world and we ended up with the strangest years of our lives. Lockdowns, masks, no school, still not sure if that one was good or bad, more hand gel that you could shake, and of course, the daily briefings which took over our TVs every night for months. But there seems to be light at the end of the tunnel. Luckily, we will be able to get a vaccine for COVID pretty soon, as the first few people have already received it. What is a vaccine? How did we get a COVID-19 vaccine? And who is going to get it first? Let's start with the initial question. What is a vaccine? Let's go to our first guest, Ella, from Butte House, for the answer. Hi, Bruno. Thanks for having me. A vaccine is a type of medicine that trains the body's immune system so that it can fight a disease that it has not come into contact with before. Vaccines expose the bodies to a weakened form of a disease, which allows the immune system to build defences against it. When scientists create vaccines, they consider how your immune system responds to the germ, who needs to be vaccinated against the germ, and what's the best technology or approach to create the vaccine is. Thank you, Ella. But how did we get a COVID-19 vaccine? First of all, there isn't just one COVID-19 vaccine. There are several. Teams of scientists all over the world have been working really hard to find a solution to the pandemic. We'll be talking about the two, which have made it to the news a lot lately. One was made in Oxford by a company called AstraZeneca. And the other, the Pfizer vaccine, was made not in one country, or even two, but three countries. The USA, Germany and Belgium all work together on this one. So, there are two vaccines, but how are they different? And why does it take so long to sort out? Let's see what Ollie from St Paul's Juniors has to say. On to you, Ollie. Hi, Bruno. It seems strange that vaccines could be different beyond which disease they're curing. But it's true. No kidding. New technology means the vaccines don't just work differently, but need to be stored, transported and distributed differently as well. Today we're talking about the Oxford and Pfizer vaccines, which, whilst both help to fight Covid, are less like two peas in a pod, are more like very distant cousins. The Oxford jab is a conventional vaccine. This means that it injects a weakened strain of the virus into your body teaching your immune system how to attack the real version. It's also relatively cheap to produce and transport. This vaccine is around 70% effective. That means that around 70% fewer vaccinated people will get COVID compared to those that have not had the jab. However, the Pfizer jab has been even more successful. It is an mRNA vaccine, which means that when the vaccine is injected into the body, it enters cells and tells them to create antibodies. It's potentially cheaper and much faster to produce, easier to modify if the virus mutates, and trials show the Pfizer jab is about 95% effective. Again, this vaccine has its downsides. It is being sold at a much higher price. Plus, it has to be stored at minus 70 degrees centigrade. That's a pretty tall order when you realise that your freezer is probably only minus 20 degrees centigrade. As if this wasn't enough, it can only be moved four times. This makes it incredibly difficult to transport to patients, particularly in remote areas. That was incredibly informative, Ollie, and I can't believe how much time and effort has gone into creating these vaccines. It's not a simple task. And why did this take so long? Well, turns out there are lots of steps in making a vaccine. First, the scientists have to invent the formula, then test it in a lab before finally testing it on people. Usually trials and passing the regulators can take between five to 10 years. So in reality, this has been an incredibly quick process. So who is going to get the vaccine first and why? 
Let's go to Jamie from St. Paul's Juniors for the answer. Hi Bruno, it's been a very long and strenuous task for the government to determine who will get the vaccine first. They have confirmed that the first people to receive it will be older people in hospital and care homes, ill people and NHS first frontline workers. The vaccine protects them within seven days of receiving it and will allow the NHS workers to continue to help those who are unwell. The vaccine had already started to be distributed and by June next year we will be able to get a vaccine if we want, but before then there is a pecking order. This is so the most vulnerable in a society are protected. But what about us? Why will kids get it last? There are two reasons. The first one is kids are much less affected. Hence why schools are open and youth activities are still on. The second reason is regulators always protect kids more than adults. Kids' medicine is tested vigorously and they won't give kids something potentially harmful, especially as the risk is so low. Back to you, Bruno. Thank you, Jamie. So with all this information, it may look like a race between countries to get the vaccine first. Instead, the common goal is to defeat the virus. And that is why scientists all over the world have been working together. Ollie, what do you think? We always want the very best, right? So it might seem that the Pfizer jab wins hands down. But actually, the 70% effectiveness of the Oxford vaccine is not bad. Flu vaccines are typically around 40% effective, and the goal for the COVID vaccine developers was to achieve at least 50% effectiveness. It does not need to be more than this to bring the virus reproduction rate down below one and effectively eliminate COVID over time. Probably more important than additional effectiveness is to get as many people vaccinated as quickly as possible, and not just in wealthy countries. So price and ease of storage and transport are just as critical to success. The upshot of all this, perhaps there is an important role for both of these vaccines to achieve the global results that count. Wow, what a podcast. I hope that you all feel much more informed about the vaccines and what's coming up next in terms of the COVID pandemic. As always, thank you and a big round of applause to our guests, Ella, Jamie and Ollie. That's it from me this year. We'll be back in 2021. But until then, Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday. Don't forget to subscribe at www.nokanews.com. Thanks for listening. See you in the new year. Vaccine, 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 vaccine. Please just keep us safe. Again, we'll hug people once we get you vaccine. And if you like the song, that is courtesy of Ryan Cordell.